So organic chemistry is the study of compounds that contain both carbon and hydrogen. And the both pieces are very important here. For example, CO2, carbon dioxide, would be considered an inorganic compound because it does not contain hydrogen. Uh, same thing for carbon monoxide, that would be an inorganic compound, or carbon tetrachloride is inorganic. So organic chemistry is the study of compounds that contain both carbon and hydrogen. Um, if we look at a carbon atom, and I've just drawn a, a rudimentary diagram of a carbon atom here, and you can see that the carbon nucleus contains six protons and it contains six neutrons. So uh, that gives us two electrons in the first shell and then four valence electrons. So the interesting thing about these four valence electrons is um, carbon will always form four covalent bonds. And I'm just going to draw in uh, some hydrogen atoms here. And so each hydrogen, of course, has one proton in its nucleus, and so each hydrogen will have one electron. And you can see how carbon and hydrogen uh, work out nicely together in that one carbon atom can form a covalent bond with four hydrogen atoms. So if we count electrons in the outer shell now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in carbon's outer shell. Of course, it's sharing electrons with the hydrogen. And then each hydrogen will have two electrons in its outer shell. And so carbon will always form four covalent bonds. Now, one thing that uh, we can do to show some structural formulas for carbon is we can let a line represent a shared pair of electrons. So here's another way of representing CH4 which is, is methane. So one carbon with four hydrogens. This is actually the simplest of all organic compounds um, because it just contains carbon and hydrogen. And of course, we just have one carbon there. And it's similar to this diagram that we were looking at uh, earlier. The only difference is instead of drawing all the electrons, we're just letting um, a, a line represent a shared pair of electrons. So this is CH4, which is also known as methane. And methane is significant because it is the simplest of all organic compounds in that it just contains four hydrogens and one carbon. When we're studying organic chemistry, we study families of compounds. the idea of, of families because like members of your family may share certain characteristics in common. Maybe you all have the same nose or the same uh, ears or, or whatnot. Families of orga organic compounds share certain characteristics in common, certain chemical characteristics. The uh, simplest organic compounds are called the hydrocarbons. And they're hydrocarbons because they contain only carbon and hydrogen. So there are no other atoms uh, involved with hydrocarbons, only carbon and hydrogen. And there are three families of hydrocarbons. There are the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. Now all of these, again, just contain carbon and hydrogen. The alkanes have all single bonds
between the carbons, whereas the alkenes can have one or more double bonds between the carbons, and the alkynes can have one or more triple bonds uh, in the chain. So let's look at, at some of the hydrocarbons and talk about their structure. Now, I just want to write a few prefixes up here. Meth, eth, prop, but, tent, hex, pept, opt, non, and dec. You may remember a lot of these prefixes from uh, geometry classes, for example, an octagon has eight sides or a decagon has ten sides. Uh, the pentagon has five sides. So these are prefixes that give us a clue as to how many numbers of carbons we have in this situation. So a compound that's, that starts out with meth, like methane that we looked at just a second ago, only has uh, one carbon. Eth means two. Pro means three. I always think about the propeller on the, on the boat there. Bute means four. Pent, five. Hex, six. Hept, seven. Oct, eight. Non, nine in deck uh, for ten, like decane. So let's bring up a program that will allow us to look at some of these uh, simple hydrocarbons. And the first one is methane, which we looked at just a second ago. But you can see what methane looks like uh, very nicely with this program. You can see that it has what we call a tetrahedral shape uh, with the way the hydrogens are positioned. So methane can consists of one carbon and there are four hydrogens attached to it. Again, methane is the simplest of the organic compounds. Next, let's look at ethane. And so ethane has two carbons and you can see carbon one and carbon two and then if you look as I spin it, you can see that each carbon has three hydrogens attached to it. So this is ethane, it would be C2H6. If we look at propane, propane contains three carbons. So you can see one, two, three carbons, and then uh, if we counted, we would count up eight hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as we add uh, carbons, our molecule gets longer. So here is butane with one, two, three, four carbons. You see we just have them all hooked together. And it's important to note that we can trace a line through uh, our uh, chain here. But there's another configuration for butane called isobutane that I want us to look at. And isobutane is, is interesting in that you see we can trace a line through three carbons, but then we have our fourth carbon attached to the middle carbon. So this is a situation in which we have different uh, chemical structures, but we have the same molecular formula. And that's what isomers are all about. So if we go back and look at butane, you see with butane again we have four carbons in a line, but when we look at isobutane, we have three in a line and then our fourth carbon is attached to the second carbon. Now this is important and we'll talk about some isomers later. For example, sucrose and fructose are isomers of one another. Sucrose is table sugar, and everyone knows how sweet table sugar is. Fructose is an isomer of sucrose, but it tastes many times sweeter, and that's just due to the way the atoms are arranged. So we can go next to look at pentane, and this is just normal pentane, and you can see that we have five carbons in a row, and we can rotate it so we can see 
some different views of, of pentane, but it's just essentially five carbons in a row. That's sort of looking at it straight down the line there. Um, hexane has six carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we go to heptane with its seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see all the hydrogens, hydrogens that are attached there. Octane, of course, will have eight. And all we're doing is just making our, our chain longer, chain of carbons and hydrogens. Nonane will have nine carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, we just have a, a long chain. And then we go to decane, which will have 10 carbons. And you can see what decane looks like here. Now, the point of all this is just to demonstrate that Families of organic compounds share certain characteristics in common. And so the alkanes is the simplest family of organic compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen and all single bonds between the carbons.